Alrighty, hey there guys, my name is Harley Wolf. This is my new channel, Creative Instigation. Uh, this is my first video, we're doing wheel molds. We're trying out some different stuff uh, for combat robotics. So I actually want to do a little bit of a mini series on robot drive because it's an area that I'm normally quite terrible at. I tried brushless drive at the last competition for the first time and it didn't fail, it worked really well. Um, so we're going to start off on wheels and then after we've done wheels we'll go on to drivetrain, we'll put a brushless prop drive NTM motor onto a Bainbox P60 and then we'll wire it all up, put it in the chassis and we'll do some testing and then when we do the testing we'll see if these wheels really work. Righto, so I've custom made some robot wheels. This is polyurethane, Flexicast 45 from Barnes, a few Australian people. It is yellow, I, didn't, I wasn't able to pick my own colouring. Now why cast my own wheels when plenty of other aftermarket wheels are available? Such as Colson's. Colson's are sweet. Um, I have to order them from America, which adds to the cost and they take forever to get here. You can put a hub in it and then a grub screw to lock it onto the shaft, which is, which is good, good, perfect. But I wanted to try something different and go full wheel drive with my robot. So I needed some timing pullers. So normal timing belt, 5mm uh, pitch, 27 tooth pulley, and it fits perfectly. I don't know how it's going to go in combat. PLA, it's printed in 100% info, it's a bit weak. But I think I've got some ideas that could get rid of that. So this is my latest. This was my first. Uh, this was silicon and cornstarch. Didn't really work out. And then this was silicon and glycerin, but not. It, it probably it probably would have been fine, but I'm not real happy with it. I couldn't do the same properties many consistently. I couldn't get the same properties consistent. And then this one is my latest silicon and glycerin. Uh, it's it's probably fine, but it does crack. It does crack a little bit if you can see it all the way over there. So I thought, screw it. I'm gonna go. Buy some good stuff, polyurethane, two part, and this one has just come out beautifully. So I printed, this is just a PLA mould that I drew up in Fusion 360 and then 3D printed out of PLA. Um, so I cast this in here, and it was a real pain in the ass to get out. I had to blow compressed air in it and then twist it out, and now it's stuck. There we go. So that, that worked, but I don't want to play with that again. So now I've made up a two-part mould. So it's in two pieces. Bolted together. I have sprayed quite a bit of ease release on it, so hopefully that'll help it get out. So I'm going to pour it, crack it open, and then see how we go. So the hub for this one. another hub printing behind me. So the hub on this one is 100% infill PLA. Feels pretty strong. It's got a little keyway there for a Bainbox P60, 16 to 1 reduction. The keyway there locks it on, helps it move, stops it from, keys it in, puts drive to the wheel. 100% infill, pretty strong, maybe. It's also very shiny and glossy because I printed it quite high resolution. So the polyurethane probably won't stick to this for long. So we need to rough it up. So you can just do this with a bit of sandpaper. Um, I don't have any sandpaper. I've got some 80 grit flapper wheel here. So I'm just going to scuff this up a little bit. You can see how it's glossy. So I'm just going to scuff it up to give it something to adhere to.
So that. So now you can see here it's all scuffed up. So that should key in very nicely. Alright. So there's a little spacer in here, three mil high, that will keep the base of this off the mold. So it will give you three mil lap. Because if you didn't do that, there'd be nothing on the bottom. It'd just be flat. So the polyurethane needs to be added in equal quanti quantities. So you can weigh it or measure it. I normally just measure it, but for you guys, I'm going to try weighing it. So for this, we've got some syringes. We've got part B, part A and B, and part A. So I measured this earlier with the hub inside. I need 120, I need 100 mil, but we're going to mix up 120 mil just so it's, you know, nice and flush. Put this off to the side somewhere. Probably should be wearing gloves. I don't have any. Actually, I'm going to get it plus. Okay, so I'll stop being lazy and wait for some gloves. Safety first, kids. So, since I don't have any mixing cups, I'm going to do some, a little bit of recycling. So, Coke bottle. Because you really want to mix it in one and tip it into another container and mix it again, just so everything's mixed. So I'm going to give you a measuring cup for the second mixer. So you've got to make sure this stuff's mixed up. This part, I don't know if it even mixes, but shake it up anyway. This stuff definitely needs to be mixed. Part A, Part B, Part A. Just put my finger on there to stop it all from running out. So I'm going to put in 60 mil. Really thick this stuff, it's like honey. I'm not gonna try and eat it though. Oh. Hmm. So I put slightly more than 60 mil in here, so I'll just get the air out. And I'll put it back till I've got 60 mil plus or minus a few mil. Okay. 60 mil and then to be doubly sure. Grams. Right up. So squeeze. Now if you want to reuse these syringes, you can't get part A and part B confused. Well a mix, then you never get the syringes apart. Okay. Part A done. 
but B, same thing. This stuff's a lot thinner. Heaps better. But it's not see through. So you help me light. Just get the air out. Okay, it's a little bit more than air. Alright, okay, so down to 60 again. Yep. On. On. Ah, oh, Elliot Grant. Perfect. Next you into there. Okay, so this this has got a fairly long cure time, thirty minutes um, before it starts to gel. So we got got plenty of time. No panic. No panic. Got it. Mix her up, nice and good. The important thing I found with mixing poly U or silicon or any two part epoxy system is to scrape the walls. Scrape the walls. So this cup is not is not a very good substitute, but we'll make it work. Making sure to get every nook and cranny. Like I said before, we're going to tip it in here and mix it again. So stuff does work better if you have a vacuum chamber. Um, I bought this because it says no vacuum chamber necessary. It will degas by itself. It, it degasses most of the bubbles. Um, I'm pretty happy with how the last one came out. But ultimately it would be better if you had a vacuum chamber to really suck out all those bubbles. Okay, come with you. Mix her up again. Okay, try not to mix air into it, but it will degas. As you can see, the bubbles are starting to rise to the surface. I'm going to leave this for a minute or two. Uh, let the bubbles get out of it. Before we pour. Alright, so it's been a few minutes. Throw this bad boy back in. Hope you can see this all over there. So I have sprayed a lot of release agent in here. Just worried that the gap it may leak out. I should get some Vaseline put it on, but I'm too lazy to walk upstairs. So we'll just we'll just run with this. So pull some in. Actually, I'll pour pour some in just on the base. And I'll put this in. Now I shall continue to pour the rest in. Okay, bring up your 
going to leave this up. It, it, it dries really well and you can just peel this out. So I'll just get the majority of it out. Like so. So we'll give that a few hours. I'm going to give it 48 hours. So, see you in 48 hours. Right, hey, so I knew that I said 48 hours. It's only been 24 hours. I'm quite impatient, but this this is hard. This is this is pretty good. So we'll pull this out and see what it looks like. Excellent. That's come out really good. That is a lot easier than what I was doing before with the single piece mold and the air compressors and the yucky. So I'm quite pleased with that. So we'll give it a test later in the series. So now this bad boy will now fit onto this keyed shaft on the Bainbots P60 and that will spin. So we will go through how to put this together in the next episode. Uh, and that concludes our tire moulding tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if there's any questions, uh, please drop by in the comments and see you on the next one.